Hey guys, this is Jeff from Smart Home Makers. Today we've got another Cara product. We've got the Cara Leak Sensor that I'm going to be integrating into Home Assistant, my smart home. For transparency, this device was sent to me for free by Cara, but all opinions are my own. We'll also be having a little bit of fun with water, seeing how sensitive this device is, what are the specs of these device, and actually how can we actually use it in our smart home. Now let's roll the intro. This device works with these little two probes that you can find over here. These probes, when they get in contact with water, they can trigger an automation. You have your sinking button, which is just right here, and you can press hard on the top of the device. And to change your batteries, you can go and with either a screwdriver or a coin or something, you can just turn this around. The battery range for this device should be around two years. And using a normal CR3032 lithium battery, which you can find behind the casing. This water leak sensor is for indoor use only, so you can't put this in the garden. This is IP67, so it should be waterproof, obviously, and dustproof. And the sensibility of this is gonna be 0.5 millimeters of water. So now let's jump into the screen, let's look at Home Assistant and let's get this paired up. This is the first Zigbee device you're actually pairing into Home Assistant. I've got a video over here that's gonna actually give you an understanding of how to do this. So I'm using ZHA, so let's go to configuration, scroll to integrations, and if I scroll down, I should have my Zigbee home automation integration. You can see I've already got 12 devices and 24 entities. So I click off over here. I have a button over here to click add device. Click add device. I will be scanning for new Zigbee devices. So take your device right here, the water leak sensor. Do a hard tap on it. Okay. So after that hard tap, we have our water leak sensors being picked up over here. So I'm going to go and rename this do something a bit more sensible. I haven't decided where to put this exactly yet, so I'm gonna leave the area blank. So I'm going back to the ZHA, click on the Entities tab. Here we go, so we've got the Water Leak Sensor Power, we've got the Low Water Leak Sensor Binary Sensor. So I'm just gonna go and rename this. Remember, you need to rename after the dots, you can't change the binary underscore sensor part the entity ID. I've got my uh, name, I'll also change that. At the moment the status is water off because it's dry. So let's click update. Now we have that. We also have a battery sensor which lets us know how much battery we have. So let me just rename this to awesome. So that's all done. Click update. Now let's add these on the dashboard. So I'm going to go to overview. I'm going to create a new dashboard. I'm going to edit and add a new view for simplicity. Just adding water leak sensor test as a name. I'm going to go into it. So add car. I'm going to add an entity. Uh, let's click binary sensor. Binary underscore sensor dot water leak. I'm going to save it. Water leak sensor here and it's dry so let's go and get some water let's put this inside let's test it out awesome so we're back now got this empty bowl got my water sensor which i'm going to drop inside completely dry got some water that i can test out also got a towel that i can use to then dry it up to see how long it takes to actually go back to dry status so let's go with that first test. So as you can see from the screen, you should be able to see it right up here. You can see the status is dry and this is going to be a live test. So let me open this up and let me try and gently put in some water in. It's probably potentially could be a situation like you're something leaking and you want to catch it. Soon. So I just keep going. Keep going. Still got dry. I think we're getting close. Wet. Oh, okay, awesome. So I noticed just now it went. I might have been delayed in me actually because I was looking at the water sensor, not looking at the screen. But I'll check that in post-editing when it actually happened. 
let's have a look at the contents of the water. Now you probably can't see this really well, but I'll uh, put my finger in. I would say it's like somewhat not much. So the device is wet, as you can see. And this was the quantity of water in the bowl. So it's pretty sensitive and I actually noticed that it immediately went to dry. So it isn't actually dry, you can see it's still wet. But the sensor has gone to dry, which is really cool. So does that mean that if I put this back inside, it's going to go to wet, let's see, three, two, one. Wet, oh wow. Up again. Shake it. So these are these two contacts are what's actually oh here you go dry. So it's very fast when it goes from dry to wet. Put it back in again. Wet. Awesome. So let's go into home assistant now. Let's create an automation. So let's say for example we want to know each time this sensor is wet. I want to be notified. I want a notification on my phone. So to do that, you're going to need to have the Home Assistant app installed on your phone. And that should be it really. Once you've enabled notifications, you should be ready to go. So let me show you how you can do that right now. The first thing I like to do when I've got a new sensor, I like to go to the developer tools to actually have a look at what this, what the status of the sensor is. So I'm going to put in water leak. You have our battery, which is 84, which I'm a bit surprised of because this is the first time I'm using it. So I'm not sure why I've already got 84% battery. Uh, and we have on as our status. And this device class is moisture. So the on is the status and off is uh, dry. So on is wet and dry is off. So if you look in the UI, you will actually see wet but I think when we do our configuration in Home Assistant, we need to use on and off. In fact, what I can do is, we've got on, I can take it out of the bowl again, use my towel, and I'm gonna give it a dry, and I wanna see if the status then goes to off, back to dry. Yeah, so it's gone to off. So we wanna look at the state changing from off to on from this device. So let's navigate to configuration. Let's go to automations. Click add automation. Click start with an empty automation. So I've called this washing machine is leaking. So this is where I'm going to actually put this device. Sometimes my washing machine just um, has just some leak. I don't know why this is happening. So I'm going to position this under the washing machine. So each time it leaks, I'll get a notification. This is going to enable me to maybe prevent some slips happening in the home because that will go to the kitchen towels and potentially someone will slip, right? So uh, I'm gonna use that for that use case. I'm uh, gonna be putting that after I've done and finished this. So trigger type, let's change this to state. The entity is our water leak sensor, not the battery, but the sensor. And we're gonna look from off to on. Conditions. I'm not going to put any conditions in. I think this should, I want to be notified every time this happens. So let's go to call service, service, and I'm going to type in notify. And here we're going to go for the whole nine yards. My message is going to be, um, it's water on the kitchen floor. So this could actually happen from any device, potentially, well, any device, any appliance that is close to the washing machine. I'm intending for the washing machine to be the culprit, but it could be the dishwasher. So potentially it could be anything. So uh, my message might be more generic, right? I can't just blame the washing machine, right? Um, so let's leave this to this. And so this is gonna notify my mobile phone. I also wanna add another action. And I'm gonna do similar again. I want to notify basically all my devices here I've got all, all of your devices will be here, wherever you have home system installed. So I'm just gonna put on the iPad just in case. And last one, I'll also do the iMac, why not? 
and do, 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 do. I'll just copy this and paste it down here. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to save it. Now, if you are new to Home Assistant, then check the link down in the description below for a free Home Assistant course. And it's awesome automation platform. I recommend you to get into it. So back in the overview, we have our automation ready to go. We have our leak sensor and it currently says it's dry, which is true because it's in my hand. So I'm going to put it in the same bowl of water that I uh, put up before. Put it in and hopefully we'll get a notification come through. Wet notification and notification. So that was the iPad making the ding sound, then the uh, iMac. So this device can be actually be a game changer for your smart home. If you have anything that you want to protect, it could be documents, for example, you have this in somewhere safe, close to your boiler, anywhere where you could potentially have flooding or leaks, this will catch it and it will also notify you and you can do more, more drastic notifications. You could have your speaker or a siren going off or you could also use this device to actually, for example, put it in a plant and use it to find out if you've actually watered the plant or not, but only indoors. You can't use this device outdoors. This device, you can purchase this. You can find a link down in the description below. It's just an affiliate link, so it costs you no nothing more. And you can find this on Amazon. Let me know if you've enjoyed this video and if you think this sensor is valuable for your smart home. I will really, I will really want to know where you're going to put this in your own smart home. If you enjoyed watching this Akara video, I've got plenty more here for you to watch. There's an entire playlist of the Akara videos. Support the channel, you can like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.